All right, RVers and RV industry, we are back at it again for some more RV sales process. And today's talk, I think, is very important because, you know, at the end of the day, if we're always looking at our customers as tire kickers, as people that aren't going to buy, as people that are researching for down the road, we're not going to go into the sales process with the right mindset to close a deal. So we have to understand why customers buy in the first place and why they're at your RV dealership today. So thanks for joining me. I'm Chris Paulino. Um, we're going to be talking about RV sales process and doing live sales role plays all the way throughout the year. So if you want to do a live role play, feel free to message me on LinkedIn and we can go about it from there. We'll get it locked in, get you here on a role play. But um, the truth is, a lot of you RV salespeople have got to stop calling your customers tire kickers before you even run them through the sales process. There is a reason that your customers are at your RV dealership today. For example, there is a RV sales lady who just started. Her name is Erica. We actually did a, um, did a live role play with her. You can see that on my LinkedIn role profile uh, under the featured section there. Um, but she just got, you know, one of her first sales the other day. I congratulated her, asked her how it went. And this, this is what she said. So I'm just going to read this here. It's not too long. So it's not going to be long winded here. So um, she goes, thanks. It was an easygoing customer, a family of five who had purchased from the dealership a few years prior and just needed the upgrade. They were not planning to buy that day, but I just went through the sales process and they really sold themselves at that point and said, let's go back in and sign. So overall, it was easy and probably not typical, I feel. However, sticking to the process and definitely getting the emotion from the family made it a deal, right? So what she's saying there is this family comes in, they want to upgrade their unit, but they're not buyers today, right? A lot of RV salespeople, once they hear that, hey, we're not buying today, we're just looking, we're researching, we're X, Y, Z. Once some salespeople hear that, what they do is they go into a negative thought process, like a negative mindset, a negative sales mind frame that doesn't allow them to actually take them through the sales process and still understand that that's, this customer is probably more of a buyer than they are leading on to be. Right. So, um, you know, just like Erica said in that message, they, that, that family said they weren't buying today. So if she would have took that for face value <clears throat> as they're not buying today and she allows them to just go look at RVs or doesn't take them through the sales process, then in fact, they're not going to buy today. Right. But because she ran them through the sales process and because she focused down on the customer's emotions, she says, so overall it was easy and probably not typical, I feel. However, sticking to the process and definitely getting the emotion from the family made it a deal. So they didn't want to buy today, but they ended up buying anyway because Erica, an amazing saleswoman, was able to get to their emotion, show them that the RV uh, has more value in their life than the money that it's going to cost to buy it. She added more value to their life in her sales process than the, the cost of the RV was. And then therefore, at the end, they bought it. And she said she didn't really have to even close them. At, she goes, they were not planning to buy that day, but I just went through the sales process and they really sold themselves. And they sold themselves because it's through emotion that customers buy. So she says, they really sold themselves and at that point said, let's go back in and sign. So they closed themselves. She didn't even have to ask those customers, at least it seems like from this message, to buy the unit. They just said, hey, we want to buy this RV because she built so much value by taking care of their emotions, by showing the right RV, and by connecting that unit to those customers' emotions that they ended up buying. So you have to understand that customers are there to buy from you. Um, Greg Hoos, sure thing, brother. I can remove you from the target list. Um, 
I mean, you're just probably one of my friends, so that's probably why you're seeing the live stream. You can unfollow me at any given minute, um, and then that will definitely help you, right, Greg, George, or oh, I said Greg. So if you want to, George, go ahead, remove me. That's not a problem. It's very easy on LinkedIn. You just go to the connection, you hit unfollow, and then you probably won't see my stuff. Um, so, hey, there we are, Erica. That's me. Thanks for the shout out. No problem. I had to let everyone know about your first sale because, you know, it's a great, you did a great job, right? You, you focused on their emotion. You, you took them through the sales process and you made it happen. So congratulations, Erica. I'm glad the sales process was able to help you. And I'm glad you were able to, you know, get to your customer's, customer's emotion, right? That's what it's about. Your RV buyers. They're not tire kickers, right? They're there to buy. So that's what you have to understand. Customers will tell you that they're there to buy, right? And then once they're there to buy, as long as you take them through the, through the sales process and learn their emotion and show them the right RV and demo that RV to their emotions, then you'll be able to close that deal. Right. But you have to understand a lot of sales is a mindset, right? Because if we go into a deal with the mindset that the customer is not going to buy, our process is wrong. We don't respect them like we should. We don't ask the questions that we should be asking. We don't spend the amount of time that we need to, to be able to get that customer to a point where they're ready to buy. Micah Hill here says, great content. Micah, thank you for that. I appreciate you. Um, and, you know, I'm just trying to help people and salespeople close more deals, right? Because I think it's important to let salespeople know that it's our customer's emotion that we have to connect to. And at the end of the day, when salespeople are reaching their customer's emotions and providing products that add value to their life, well, now that's a salesperson that's not slimy. They're not a used car salesman. They're not someone just selling something for no reason. It, they're selling it to you because they've learned that this product, this service, this RV is going to add so much value to your life, more value than what you're going to pay for it. And because of that, I have to sell it to you now, because if I don't, I'm not a good salesperson because I'm not bettering your life. If I would have found out in my interview and qualified that this RV doesn't really fit for you. Maybe it's too heavy for your tow vehicle. We don't have something on our lot that's small enough. I'm not going to sell you an RV. If I find out that you're homeless and, you know, you're, you, you can't buy an RV or, you know, there's different things that you can possibly find out that would be like, well, I don't know that this person really needs an RV. So how am I going to sell it to them? You know, I can't, right? But if we have a customer that comes in and they have dreams, they have goals, they have uh, you know, the ability, the want, to the desire to buy an RV, well, they can be a buyer today, right? So we have to make sure that we don't start the sales process off in the wrong mindset because that right there can kill the deal. And then all we'll do as a salesperson is just blame it on a tire kicker, right? We'll just say, hey, this person's a tire kicker, um, you know, forget about it, right? So we'll just blame it on a tire kicker. And then we'll not follow up with that customer as we should, right? We won't take them back through the sales process. And we'll just, as ourselves, as a salesperson, we'll like kind of give ourselves an out by calling the customer a tire kicker. Like, no, that is not the truth, right? Customers are there to buy. Their most valuable asset, their most valuable resource is their own time. Why would they spend their Saturday evening, their Saturday morning, their Friday, whatever day they come to see you, why would they spend that time at the dealership if they were never ready to buy, right? They wouldn't, right? That's the truth is they wouldn't do that. So you have to understand that from the beginning. And when you hear it, hear it, let it go in one ear, out the other ear, right? Is that the saying? In one ear, out the other ear. Now, I hear what you're saying, but let me ask you this. You know, what are you looking for? What are you going to do in the RV, right? I hear that you're not buying today, but what are you going to be doing with it? Who's going to be going with you? How are you going to be using it? You know, where do you want to go, right? Because now all it says, I hear what you're saying, but let me focus on you. Let me focus on your needs. Let me focus on your wants. And then we'll see at the end of the sales process what happens, right? Now I hear you. 
Let me focus on you and then we'll see what happens. Because the truth is, is they're possibly buyers, just like Erica was able to take those non-buyers today through the sales process and get them to close. But it's because she had the right mindset. It's because she took them through the sales process. It's because she stayed on their emotions that she was able to close that deal today. And if you do that on all of your transactions with all of your customers and you dig into their emotions and you hear that they're tire kickers, but you don't put much energy into that, right? You hear what they're saying, but you go through the process anyway because we'll see at the end what happens. Right. And typically we're going to be able to close that deal or we'll have a much better chance to close the deal once we get to that point. So let's stop calling our customers tire kickers. Let's stop calling our customers researchers or time wasters or looky loos or one of the million different things we call our customers to make ourselves feel better about a salesperson because we were not able to close the deal. The reason you didn't close the deal is not because of your customer. It's because of you, the salesperson. You weren't able to do a good enough sales process. You weren't able to learn your customer's emotions well enough, and you were not able to tie your, your RV, your product, or your service to those emotions well enough to show your customer that the value add in their life is more than they're gonna spend on it, so they might as well buy that RV, that product, that service today, right? So we have to understand that. Stop going into these sales with these potential customers and thinking to yourself that they are a tire kicker because they are not. They are a buyer. They're going to buy today, they're gonna buy in a week, they're gonna buy maybe in a month. It doesn't matter, but they're gonna buy eventually. The question now becomes, who are they gonna buy from? What salesperson is gonna be able to do such a good sales process that they're able to get that customer to buy? Right, that's what we have to learn how to do. And that's where a sales process comes in. Because when you can follow a sales process and you're doing the same thing over and over again and you're learning from it and you're building on it, you'll start to hear the same questions. You'll start to see customers are very similar to, to each other. You'll start to learn ways how to close your customers once you hear buying cues and once people start asking about financing and monthly payments and so on and so forth, you'll know, hey, let's just go buy this RV. Let's just go write them up now. No reason to show them another one because I know that I can close them on this one, right? So as you keep going through that process and keep building on it and keep getting better, you're going to decrease that time per deal, which is going to allow you to talk to more customers, which is going to allow you to close more sales. And in addition, we're going to be so focused down on our customers' emotions, needs, and wants that our customer is gonna go through the quickest sales process they ever went through, <clears throat> and they're gonna feel like all of their needs, all of their wants, all of their desires were met, asked, and cared about, and they will be happy to buy from you. They'll be referring you to everybody that they know, their family, the friends, the extended people at the campground, so on and so forth, because you were a salesperson that was unlike the rest, that was able to pull out their emotion, that cared about their needs, wants, and desires, and was able to deliver on their exact needs, wants, and desires. You know, it sounds, sales seems like it's confusing, but when you really break it down to it, it's not that confusing. What's hard about sales is digging past surface level with our customers asking those hard questions, getting those hard answers from those hard questions, and really just getting past those objections. That's what's hard about sales. But if we know how to do it, it's not hard to overcome an objection. It's not hard to learn our customers' true needs, wants, and desires once we know how to do that, right? But it all starts with having, with having the right mindset whenever you're going into an RV deal. It starts with having the right mindset from the very second you see your customer. 
We can't think of them as tire kickers, as looky loos, as people that aren't buying, because if we do that, we're setting ourselves up for failure. And I want you to understand that because it's very important to have the right mindset when you go into a RV sale or when you go into a sales process. Okay, because if you don't have that right mindset, we're not going to close the deal. Okay, so Pete Satowski here. Hey, Chris Paulino. Oh, whoops, one second. Try to put it up on the screen here and then this thing went bonkers. But look, hey, Chris Paulino, great info. If you need great insurance prices to help move those babies out, have them call me. 440-671-0379. Look, here, Pete, I am even giving you, look at that, a free plug for your insurance just for commenting. So appreciate you, Pete. Thanks for letting me know um, you like the content there. If you have good insur insurance, I, I don't know if Pete has good insurance. I've never dealt with him, but nonetheless, his number was on the screen. Feel free to give him a call. Thanks for being here, Pete. Um, but yeah, I mean, the truth is, and same goes for insurance, right? You know, if we're thinking of people in insurance that are calling us, that are asking us questions, they're like, oh, they're not buyers. They're not buying today. They're not buying life insurance, health insurance, car insurance, whatever we're selling. Eh, whatever. We're not going to go through the sales process. We're not going to learn their emotions on, you know, why it matters, you know, to, to have life insurance or whatever it is, right? But the truth is through many sales industries, not just RVs, cars, real estate, logistics, B2B, B2C. It does not matter if we're able to learn our customers' true needs, wants, and desires, then we are able to close the deal today. If our customers are at our dealership today, they can be a buyer today. No matter if they tell you they're not buying, no matter if they tell you they're buying in five years, in a year, in months, it does not matter. I have sold RVs personally to buyers that told me they're not buying for five years. I know that it's possible. I have done it. And many salespeople do it day in and day out. RV salespeople, the good ones, are turning customers into buyers that say they're not buying today right so get your mindset right go into the, the sale knowing that you're going to get their emotions you're going to get their needs you're going to get their wants and then if you have an rv that meets their needs meets their wants meet their desires close the deal today because that's what your customer deserves right so we're going to be talking about rv sales process and, and sales process in general all year uh, my agency, we can help your business or your dealership get more customer leads, right? So if you want to, uh, if you want your sales team talking to more customers, we can help you out there. Feel free to give me a call, 330-703-3930. Again, 330-703-3930, right? Okay, and you can also here, I'll just put it up on the screen here for a second. Okay, one sec, let me grab this info. I'll put my contact info up on the screen. And then, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me, right? Um, and then we can kind of go from there. So um, there you go. My direct 330-703-3930. You can email me, chris at got.marketing, um, or you can check out our virtual training right online at got.marketing. Um, or actually sellmorelivemore.net. There's a typo there. Um, but nonetheless, I appreciate you for being here. If you have any questions, if you want to do a role play, feel free um, to message me on LinkedIn. Feel free to give me a call. That way we can get those scheduled in. And again, if your dealership um, or business needs more customers to speak with, or if you need training for your sales team, I can provide in-person training, virtual training, um, vir video virtual training. I mean, there's many things we can do to help your sales team close more deals. So again, thank you for being here for the RV sales process. I will see you on the next one.